and he's going to talk about the Josephson effect, quantum and material issues, and extreme conditions. So we are going to do uh, 15 minutes, then a break for 10 minutes with questions, and then we go again 15 minutes. Then. Okay. Uh, thanks. Leandro uh, for the introduction and I would first of all like to thank Herman and the organizing committee to organize this wonderful event here and for inviting uh, me here. Um, uh, actually um, after the first day of uh, seminars I slightly changed uh, when I heard, so heard the other talks the, some details of the talk but nevertheless, the spirit is to understand just some coupling in, uh, um, and all this quantum nature in some not uh, conventional uh, limits. So this means uh, uh, materials, uh, uh, materials pushed at the limit, uh, nanostructures, and uh, um, all these three uh, pillars of materials, quantum and nano, all enters into defining the Johnson effect and into uh, the study of this effect. Um, if we try to, 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 to frame this talk with what has been discussed yesterday, yesterday we had wonderful talks about fundamentals by, by Dieter, Leandro on atomic contacts and mesoscopic uh, uh, physics, Dimitri about uh, uh, all concerning the density of states, and then we had the, the, the future with Paul. Form. And uh, actually, I hope to, to, to do some kind of linking and to, to, to bring from the fundamentals to some elements which are important for, uh, for uh, quantum computers. Um, obviously, all these starts, and I took this from uh, John Martinez, one of his reviews, that uh, superconducting qubit research began in the 80s. And that's uh, a lot of things started. <laughs> very far in the past, as Dimitri also was mentioned yesterday. So actually, uh, uh, the point is if macroscopic marbles would behave in a quantum mechanical fashion. And this was demonstrated by the John Clark group at that time with Devore and Martinez. And uh, we will basically go through these experiments and do some kind of uh, uh, more recent updates. So this is uh, somehow the main track, also uh, in, in a mm, very strong material science uh, environment and also taking into account all the non-improvements that we have been developed in these uh, last uh, 30 years. And obviously uh, this is uh, always the product of a culture, of, of a school uh, in Napoli. Here we have Roberta and Davide and uh, these are theoreticians we collaborate with. Incidentally, here there is also Tony Leggett who come <laughs> in one of his visits. And a lot of very strong collaboration with Chalmers University, the group of Floriana Lombardi, and more recent work with the group of Cambridge, Mark Blamay, Oleg Mukanov at IPRESS, Valerio Ezzanov, and also very long-standing collaboration with John Kirtley, since I was a postdoc since a long time ago. And uh, actually, Oleg Mukanov uh, CQC is a little ad, you know, the open uh, uh, European affiliates, which is, I think, very important for superconducting electronics. And installed this lab in Napoli, and uh, I think could be a very fruitful uh, uh, industrial partner for, for, for a lot of uh, ideas and electronic applications. Then, let me also finally uh, um, thank my big maestro, not anymore here, Antonio Barone, and uh, with his book, because I think that all we are going to discuss to uh, today is, you know, it's a product of ideas that have been around since uh, quite some time. So, yeah, I, I, um, unfortunately, we'll have some kind of double uh, slides when compared to yesterday, but uh, it's, uh, I will be very gentle and very quick just to be self-consistent and sometimes we need this passage. So this is uh, just an effect, I'm not going to comment. The only thing that we have to, to remind is that we usually talk about uh, uh, junctions with where the uh, just energy is much larger than the charging energy. Uh, this is the IV curve and we are going to discuss quite in detail what it means and the conclusion you can take. And uh, obviously uh, with the nano world and with qubits, uh, what is starts to be interesting is that 
actually um, you need the quantum treatment of the junction and we need to consider uh, 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 you know these quantities become operators so we need to consider charging energy this which is the commutation relation between phase and charge um, uh, is also not even completely exact um, but we'll, we will leave for, for later so uh, this is the, the energy so actually the problem changes uh, here we know there are these basic equations when we have a quantum circuit we have the characteristic Hamiltonian we solve it and we find which are the solutions and that's the structure of, of the qubit that Paul this started describing yesterday um, again, uh, we have fingerprints are just an effect. Magnetic pattern is, is some kind of immediate response, and it was largely introduced yesterday. Um, um, I want to repeat the, something just to give you them. You know, the first idea was just a uh, junction, and is uh, uh, the, I take the two most important books on that. Uh, the one by Antonio Baron and Gianfranco Vettone, the other one by Licare. You know, is really to try to make a device. So you are careful about the critical current, you are careful about the normal resistance, and if you want digital circuits, you want to increase as much as possible this product. Obviously, you have to, to, to consider that there are a lot of things running on, we'll see them. And so, there are, um, uh, because these junctions is a capacitor, it's inductance, and so we'll have that the behavior will change as a function of frequency. And so we'll have, we have to consider the plasma frequency, we have to consider some kind of characteristic times in our circuit. And obviously, and we'll be also concerned, up, concerned about that, uh, also some kind of damping parameter. So it will say how much our junction coupled to, to, to the environment. And uh, uh, what is also funny, this is the, the first chapter of Likar's book, is that actually, uh, you know, coherent phenomenon superconductivity, and uh, uh, this problem demonstrated that macroscopic, you know, the phase is macroscopic, is somehow, for the experiments we'll discuss, treated as secondary quantum uh, uh, macroscopic effect. So, macroscopic quantum tunnels we are going to discuss, they are concerned about fluctuations, that seems to be the less important thing, but at the end, they, are, they turn to be some kind of crucial fingerprints to understand the physics of the junction, and also, turn to be fundamental in order to make a, a qubit work. So, uh, um, a kind of little brief history about materials. So, in the, in the, uh, after discovery just an effect, basically these were the soft superconductors, tin, indium, lead, aluminum, and basically uh, they were all based on native barriers. The big improvement started a little bit later with niobium and with the, some kind of seminal papers by the Bell Group, uh, by uh, Michael Gurvich, where he was able to deposit the aluminum barrier on niobium. This was in 81. And after that, there had been a, an amazing progress uh, for, for scale squid because the day, uh, not only using rigid superconductors, but really making a trilayer, a barrier, something that you could control. Obviously, this brought just an effect in another, in another dimension. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, working as a, seeing as a function of time, uh, then there was the uh, discovery of ITC. ITC, also up to now, it's almost impossible to make a trilayer, except a few uh, uh, lonely attempts. And so, oh, and we also get into that, the, the, the main technique has been the, the bicrystals, uh, and we will uh, we'll see them shortly. So basically you glue to different uh, crystals, and then around this area there is some kind of weak coupling, typical of Johnson effect. Uh, obviously here we have TC. Um, to have large TC, why ITC was so important, everybody you know, knows for the fundamental reasons, but for devices, the really hope was to have very high ICRN values, which are expected to be close to the gap value. Um, all other junctions, uh, junctions based on other materials, also here, basically, they were all using simple point contact, like for heavy fermions, or using, uh, uh, again, by crystals. And I would say that the ITC, in terms of junction, somehow changed the approach. Because we understood that to make a good, very good junction, you need 
TM, you need a lot of microstructure information to be able to understand how the barrier behaves. And in terms of ideas, this by crystal was also used for a lot of uh, uh, these other materials. Um, again, if we look at, at the more recent evolution of these uh, uh, devices, we could say that all these uh, soft superconductors are still quite important. Um, we have seen yesterday the talk by Leandro, or mesoscopic structure atomic contact, all with aluminum, all qubits, all with aluminum. And then also the hybrids, we'll see, all, all of them mostly use aluminum. Aluminum is simple. Uh, is a lot under control, but we'll see it's not perfect. Uh, but anyway, you can do a lot of fundamental studies. Uh, if you want to do digital circuits, and there is also a lot about ferromagnetic hybrids, you, you prefer niobium. And uh, um, the experience, for instance, of digital circuits by hybrids is, is very illuminating from this respect. Concerning ITC, ITC uh, is some kind of <laughs> low founded uh, uh, environment, but some ca somehow there have been developments related to making them, ship them very narrow and um, nanowires for some uh, detectors. But I think that still there is a lot to, to, to use now that we understand more things. I think that all the things we have learned can be again fruitfully used. Um, uh, something that really I put like uh, some kind of uh, funny uh, information is that here uh, we have, uh, uh, if we plot the coherence length and we think that here at TC and the aluminum, you know, funny is that for different reasons, it seems like this size uh, is uh, some kind of very interesting regime where, you know, where you do some kind of hybrid devices or where you try to shape nanowires uh, and to try them narrow. Um, and these obviously follow the, 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 the progress in, uh, in nanolithography, nanofabrication, and in combining knowledge of materials when, with, uh, with nanofabrication. And uh, uh, again, here, you need to know about the mesoscopic physics to be able to disentangle a lot of these physics. Um, we briefly, you know, this is some kind of different types of junctions. We will revise them and actually to, to, uh, to understand a little bit more, to put some accent about uh, what is uh, the nano flavors. And uh, obviously, with the eye, keeping an eye on the codes and languages of the Johnson effect. Me, as an experimentalist, you know, I try to make as much as profit from this information and with, from the magnetic pattern, for instance, put in microwaves, uh, obviously smart uh, junction configuration, IV, and fluctuations, and we'll mostly deal with this one and this one. So trilayer already largely described. We have a barrier here and uh, uh, between two superconducting electrodes, and when you are able to, 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 to grow a multilayer, that's the first natural choice to, to, to take. Uh, then also, uh, it's quite, this, you know, I put this reference by Takaya Naji because they are, as a, in a minute, they are very, very inspiring. But this is something that mutuated from semiconducting, it's called it's coplanar structures, basically, you have these two possibilities. You have a substrate, then you have your barrier that can be whatever you want, and that's the advantage. Uh, and then you have the two superconductors, and obviously you, you can make them uh, with uh, different technological uh, techniques uh, as close as possible. And these obviously followed the, the, the progress of uh, nanotechnology. Uh, otherwise, you, you grow superconductors and then you put uh, a barrier on the top. Both of them are advantages and disadvantages, but it's uh, remarkable that already in the 90s, uh, uh, what these junctions could do was a lot of, of information about mesoscopic, uh, you know, it was mixing the physics of the semiconductor as a barrier with the physics of the superconductor. So we would have superconductivity, but we also would also have mesoscopic, truly mesoscopic effect in the barrier. And these are some examples like uh, mesoscopic fluctuations, uh, localization effects, this is another example, and uh, uh, some quantized supercurrent. And uh, um, the more advanced version for these junctions are the 
the, the those where you use or they use graphene as a uh, as a barrier. So here, uh, you know, to 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 design this junction, the layout, you 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 start from the the thing which has the biggest problem. So in this case, the biggest problem is the graphene. You know, it's you cannot deposit on the top. So once you you deposit graphene, then you can put the contacts on the top, and this is. Uh, the way it's usually made these kind of junctions with superconducting aluminum. Um, here, uh, so the idea is that you have the flake and then you deposit to the beam contacts later. And uh, we have remarkable examples of junctions that work. Obviously, um, not only graphene, we can have topological <laughs> insulators or, or not topological insulators, as Paul Kampf said before. Uh, and and uh, ferromagnet, whatever. This is very easy, this kind of hybrid, because uh, if you don't have a, a trilayer technology, you can mix materials, you can work on the interface. Obviously, all these are quite demanding in the sense that uh, you need some kind of refined techniques to clean the surface and to mix them. Uh, and then at the end, the physics is nice. You can discover, for instance, that there are some edge modes. For here, for instance, looking from the magnetic pattern, uh, this the group of uh, Jacobi and Mollenkamp, something similar. So uh, you can nicely fit the physics of, uh, of the barrier with superconductivity. And uh, this is another example from literature. Uh, obviously, what is also nice uh, um, that you can basically r uh, r Really derive how critical current, the typical Gelson junction parameters may change for this typical junction configuration. Yesterday, uh, Dieter has mentioned you how the, the, the space is important, how to confine flux, the dimension, and all this comes new when you have some kind of different different topological structure, not topological, but the geometry junction. Uh, so here, if you have a, a monolayer, you will change the way the flux will enter, you will change the way the current will be distributed. And this you, you measure with typical junctions parameters like the critical current or here the magnetic, for instance, like in this case, if you want to put the flux in a bidimensional uh, uh, graphene sheet, you have to be careful and you have to be, and there are a lot of things to take into account. Um, again, another possibility is the one with nanowires. Um, also here, the most natural choice is uh, you have the, the nanowires, typically is Inas, and then you put the aluminum contacts. This is a nice picture from Scola Normale di Pisa. Uh, uh, a la much more complicated, but still possible, even if the devices are not so uh, high quality, is try to put the nanowire on some electrodes. In this case, they are uh, YBCO. Uh, the idea is here is that uh, since we have two complicated things, so that the simplest is uh, to, to drop the nanowire on the top. You have problems on how to focus, but, but, but this can be done, and this is the example of the device. Unfortunately, it's not superconducting at these distances, but, but, but it's a, a, a junction. Um, obviously, about this, we have heard a lot. And they are, they, with aluminium, they are beautiful devices, and uh, uh, actually have been widely used for, for you know, to, at least to discuss, to enter into debate of uh, Majorana Fermions. Here, I, I don't say anything, just say that, that a lot of people believe that if you have a Johnson junction, you can, with, uh, with nice materials, you can enter into debate. Uh, my uh, very humble comment is uh, you, you need to know very well the junction you have to be able to, to, to understand if you have artifacts, because this is very tricky, this kind of junctions. And then, obviously, the, the, the last one is weak links. And uh, you can, uh, you have, these are from Antonio's book, uh, Indium, the, the, at the very first, they were poorly reproducible, but now you can even think of pattern uh, Lausto system, so this, this is sample from the Triscone group in Geneva, and uh, uh, the, you know, this is a really two dimensional uh, layer. And uh, with uh, being careful with the, the way you etch the, 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 the around, you can make some kind of, of path, and this path can be even uh, a, a, some kind of weak link. This is obviously a long story, and this starts again in the 60s, 70s, and uh, we all know that these weak links are uh, extremely simple, extremely valuable, but also they bring a lot of non-equilibrium. And uh, 
and uh, that's uh, also something nice about the, their physics. So uh, if you want to control them, you have to be careful about non-equilibrium. And this again, Moji. This is what I um, told before, is that this uh, uh, Laos store system, you can pattern, you can do weak links, and you can have some kind of typical Josephson fingerprints. Um, all these, uh, so weak links we can clearly express with the Josephson uh, general uh, current phase relation, and uh, here I'm not going to spend time because already has been done by, by Dieter, so you know about that. I just want to, to, to say how it's nice that basically the same nanowire, if it's long, if it's short, this is a Johnson junction, this is a filament with depairing currents. So uh, this length of the nanowire will be somehow ruling in for these weak links the, 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 the effect. Here I just re re remind you that see, this is a tunnel junction, and when you have deviations, this is a pi junction, so this is somehow the very first thing imprint of the junction. And then you have for the, the phi junction, this is, uh, this is in orange. And when you have the red one, you don't have any more a real junction. This is some kind of, of depairing mode. And obviously here you, have, you may have effects in these deviations of hold the kinetic part of the electrodes. Uh, then we go finally, um, here I will be extremely fast to complete the overview, uh, that's the, the, you know, the talk of Leandro yesterday, and basically uh, these are uh, atomic <laughs> contacts, so they are wonderful, and this completes the part of mesoscopic physics uh, that was studied in the 90s, and uh, um, and here I stress again that to, what is remarkable is that we have a, an accurate measurement of single Andreev modes. So we can control the perfect uh, correspondence. This is always not so easy between uh, simulated curve and IV curves. And obviously this gives a very nice understanding of under reflection, uh, very, very detailed, because you see one after the other one. That's quite uh, uh, powerful. And this we have already s s seen yesterday. Then we get to, to another way of doing junctions. Uh, I mentioned that, introduced them before, with, uh, with green boundaries. So uh, the, the nice, uh, so the ni not nice story about high TC is that uh, uh, you cannot grow them in a very reproducible way. The nice story about high TC is that if you grow, oops, sorry, if you grow them on two different substrates and you grow them, here you will have uh, nice and quite reproducible junction to some extent. So basically you can have two different situations. You, can, you may have a tilt in plane, like here, a tilt out of plane, and then you may have a twist. All these are junctions. Um, these are some kind of limit uh, configurations where you can make them a little bit more regular, and we'll see them uh, later. So, uh, again, I mentioned that at the beginning. What is also nice is if you increase the misorientation angle, you have some kind of tuning of the critical current. This is some. Uh, there is a very good correspondence. This, in this case, they are not just on junctions. If you increase the green boundary mis misalignment, you get to the Johnson regime. Um, obviously, this is somehow an intelligent change control because this is somehow related to the ICRN product that I mentioned before, that is somehow the final target of a lot of applications of junctions, the way you build them. And uh, uh, for high TC, except the intrinsic junctions, which has a different wall, you know, all of them are at least one or, uh, about 100 magnitude lower than the, the expected value from the gap. So, ITC and junctions, I mean, this is a very inspiring story to, 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 to recall how with the Johnson junctions you can learn about the, the order parameter in a, in, a, uh, in a material, specifically in this case for ITC about the wave. This is from uh, the first experiment by uh, uh, Dave Van Arlingen, Urbana Champagne, and actually here, 
uh, there are all different parameters. At that time, it was quite an intense debate. Uh, now it seems to be history, but at that time, people were quarreling who was right uh, and uh, wrong. Uh, unfortunately, this basic information doesn't still give the mechanism, but it's somehow that you should take into account to, do, uh, to formulate hypothesis. And uh, uh, here, they made, uh, they made two experiments. The first one was with a squid. So if you have uh, isotropic linoleum, this is the typical uh, interference pattern you will see. But if you have a pi junction, uh, you have a minimum here. Obviously, when you do that, you're always concerned if you trap, if I trap flux, whatever happens. And so the, the, the addition improvement was this one, the so-called uh, uh, corner junction. And uh, uh, so again, this is a junction typical for an offer pattern for a classical junction. In this case, they were using YBCO single crystals. But uh, in the case, you do corner junction again with the um, isotropic, like now, standard junction, you will have again the front of a pattern. But uh, the nice story about the wave is that uh, it's clear, it's some kind of clear fing fingerprint in this case. If you have a corner junction with a D wave or the parameter, you get this characteristic interferometric pattern. And you know, you don't have a unique maximum, you have two maximum uh, uh, at finite magnetic field. And this was the predictions, and this was the experiment. Um, obviously, uh, this is, uh, these are the measurements, and then uh, you know that for these junctions, you may have uh, um, some kind of uh, uh, structural imperfections that we call faceting. And in this case, we may have magnetic patterns which are a correlation one to one to the facets uh, between the two junctions, two sides of the junction. Uh, this is an example. And here, if you may have an imaginary component of the order parameter, you would see an, uh, some kind of asymmetry. These are to say that it's some kind of very well defined. Um, uh, classifications of magnetic pattern about uh, uh, with the, the, the microstructures. Uh, here it's other examples, you know, you lose this Fraunhofer pattern when you have uh, um, a nanowire because uh, not more than when you're confined geometry because there is not enough space to make a flux quantum. So you will see some kind of transition from this interference pattern to something monotonous. And eventually, if you have second harmonic, you will have additional structure here. This is just to tell you that really once we measure a magnetic pattern, we know very well what's going on uh, if we are able to correlate with, with the, with the, with the um, microstructure. Um, but uh, for sure, another very that uh, uh, I think it's very inspiring for a school and for young students uh, that is uh, the, the experiments about the way by John Kitty and Chang Tsui. Again, this is uh, uh, was an old idea in some sense that was uh, by Buleski, Kuzin, and Sobyan in '77, and then Geschken by Larkin and Barone on heavy fermions. And actually, the idea is that if you have um, uh, a loop with a classical junction, basically you will add to the Josephson energy, the, the loop energy, and this will be the pattern. So you will have one minima here, and this will be the ground state. So in general, for, for this kind of ring, there will be no activity. When you cool it, it will be uh, without any current. But if by any chance you have a pi junction, this becomes to be the energy, and is radically different with uh, two minima at different magnetic fields, and, uh, and uh, which, which, are, um, which are these two ones. And uh, in other words, uh, when, you, uh, do, when you are able to build the right sample, so it means uh, yesterday uh, Dimitri briefly introduced that. You have three crystal, again based on the green boundary junction I mentioned before. You plan in some way that uh, you build the angles to be in the condition of having just one pi junction, because here you have three junctions, so you have to be in the condition to have just one pi junction. You build these angles in such a way that you have an odd number of pi junctions, and then you see that. Uh, 
there is a spontaneous flux. In this case, it's up. It could be also the way other down. And, uh, and also, so it's, it's spontaneous, and very importantly, it's, uh, it breaks symmetry. You know, uh, the system, when you cool down, it picks this direction the other way, and it's spontaneous. So when, because we are used to think that when we call in magnetic field, they always, you always trap uh, fluxes. In this case, there are no flux on a sample which is uh, millimeters um, wide. So, and if we see here, um, uh, this is another picture where you can see this. This is the flux quantum still.